Hi there, Heather Ferber, Langlois Vital Nutrition Center in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Today I'd like to discuss a little bit about perimenopausal and menopausal weight gain. This is a challenge that I hear about frequently in my practice, and I truly do empathize with those who are struggling. There are several reasons why we see this happen um, as we age. As we lose our progesterone and our estrogen, our body becomes much more resistant to our own insulin. And also as we age, we see that um, we have a decrease in muscle mass and our ability to build muscle mass. So what we may see is we're putting on more fat instead of more muscle. And this significantly impacts our metabolism and how many calories we can consume on a daily basis. So yes, I know when we all ate ice cream back in our 20s, every single day for dessert, it didn't matter because our hormones were really healthy and our metabolism was really strong. Now in our 40s and our 50s, we are, are not as well balanced and we may be nutrient deficient in quite a few areas. I do see a lot of nutrient deficiencies as they pertain to magnesium, the B vitamins, um, vitamins A, C, D, um, also the omegas. You know, there's a lot of us that are in those perimenopausal years that are not getting sufficient intake of those specific nutrients, which are so important to hormone health and so important to weight balancing. I personally believe that nutrition and these nutrient deficiencies are the most important piece of balancing weight gain for perimenopause and, and menopause and beyond. So, you know, what can you be doing to help yourselves in these situations? Well, think about balancing your blood sugars. You should be thinking about balancing your blood sugars all the time. Fat, protein, and fiber. And fiber is also your carbohydrate, okay? Those are your three big macros, your carbs, your protein, your fat. Those are your energy sources that help build good structure in your body. So you want to ensure that you're getting enough of your macros. You also want to ensure that you're getting enough of your micronutrients, which are your vitamins and minerals, because those are the little spark plugs that are responsible for the thousands of chemical reactions that take place in our body on a daily basis. So you want to optimize those two categories. So think about balancing your blood sugars at every single meal. Find a way to uh, address those nutrient deficiencies, okay? There's ways we can do that in the office. The third component is find ways to better manage stress. You know, we all need outlets to be able to relax and restore adrenal function. So that is an important piece of the equation as well for managing the weight gain. And for some of my clients, I do find that they need to dig a little bit deeper into their gut health and what types of foods they're consuming. You know, do they have some type of systemic inflammation that is all process that's already going on that needs to be addressed? What is their liver health like? So those are the pieces of the food side of things that I'm always thinking about to help clients minimize the weight gain. There are some other components that do play important roles. I'm always encouraging clients to move your body every single day. Doing HIIT workouts, high intensity workouts, may not be ideal for those of us in our 40s and our 50s, depending on our adrenal function. We may need to adjust our workout plans, but still overall, we do need to move our bodies every single day. We may need to uh, consume fewer calories. If we are losing muscle mass and we have more abdominal fat, we are not going to burn calories at the same rate that we were previously burning them when we were in our 20s and our 30s. I also suggest limiting carbohydrate or processed carbohydrates and sugar. And also in that category fa falls the alcohol. You know, minimizing the amount of drinking also definitely helps to maintain a healthy weight during the perimenopausal years. And the last piece, seek support. That's what we're here for. There's lots of different avenues that people can approach, but I do believe nutrition and nutrient deficiencies is something that must be addressed in order to minimize perimenopausal and menopausal waking. Hope to see y'all soon.